Summary of the Art of Thinking Clearly by Rolf Dobelli Part 1 Summary A fantastic book summarizing a variety of biases that affect our thinking and decision-making. Dobelli leans heavily on people like Kahneman, Taleb, and others to build this extensive list of things to watch out for. Well worth the read, and will likely require revisiting when making decisions. These are just short summaries of the biases. To know more about them go to mycognitivebiases.com or get the paperback or a free audiobook of The Art of Thinking Clearly from the link in the description. To avoid this video from being too long, it has been split into two parts with approximately 50 biases in each part. Let's begin. Number 1. Survivorship Bias We tend to only hear about the successes or survivors, we don't hear the stories of the failures, and thus overestimate the chances of success. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, is this an example of survivorship bias? Number 2. Swimmer's Body Illusion Confusing the factor for selection with the result, for example, swimming gives you a great frame, when actually, great swimmers are born with a good frame for swimming. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I confusing the factor for selection with the result? Number 3. Clustering Illusion We tend to see patterns where there aren't any, for example, patterns in the clouds. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I seeing a pattern where there isn't one? Number 4. Social Proof We feel we are behaving correctly when we act the same as other people. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I changing my behavior or opinion because others are doing, acting, thinking this way? Because of social proof? Number 5. Sunk Cost Fallacy When we consider the cost incurred to date as a factor in our decision-making, only your assessment of the future costs and benefits should count. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I looking at only the future costs and benefits? Disregard any cost to date. Number 6. Reciprocity we feel we owe something in return whenever we accept a favor or free item. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, do I feel obligated to return a favor here? Have they done something for me that might make me subject to reciprocity? Number 7. Confirmation Bias We interpret evidence to support our existing beliefs. To counter, set out to find disconfirming evidence for your hypothesis. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, can I find disconfirming evidence for my current hypothesis? What are the limitations of this evidence? How might someone with the opposing viewpoint interpret this evidence? Number 8. Authority Bias We tend to defer to authority, and consider the opinions of supposedly authoritative people too strongly. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, is some sort of authority figure exerting an influence on me? Number 9. Contrast Effect we judge things in relation to other things. We also don't notice small, gradual changes. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what am I judging this in relation to? How would this look in a different context, compared to something else? What sort of small, gradual changes might I be missing? Number 10. Availability Bias We create a picture of the world, or construct arguments, based on examples and evidence that most easily come to mind. Counter by spending time with people who think differently than you do. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I overvaluing evidence because of my own experience or the ease with which I can recall it? Who can I get an opinion from who has a different expertise and experience than me? Number 11. It'll get worse before it gets better fallacy. A variation of confirmation bias. If the problem persists, the prediction is confirmed. If it improves, the expert can attribute it to his prowess. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what evidence would I have to see to make a judgment about whether this situation is improving? What are clear and verifiable milestones? Number 12. Story bias. We try and shape everything into stories. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I trying to shape this into a story? What is my confidence level that I actually understand this? Number 13. Hindsight Bias In retrospect, everything seems clear and inevitable. How to avoid this bias? 
Ask yourself, what predictions am I making about this? How confident am I? What historical decisions do I have recorded that might indicate my prediction level? Number 14. Overconfidence effect. We systematically overestimate our knowledge and our ability to predict. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what is the pessimistic scenario here? How far off is my own prediction from this scenario? Number 15. Show for knowledge. The knowledge required to make it appear as though someone understands something, when in fact they do not. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, does this person, or do I, truly understand this situation? Or is it outside my circle of competence? Number 16. Illusion of control. We believe we influence far more than we actually do. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what specific things can I actually control in this situation? Number 17. Incentive Super Response Tendency People respond to incentives by doing what is in their best interests. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what incentives are at play here? How do they likely affect the behavior of those involved? Number 18. Regression to the mean. Average values will fluctuate around a mean. Decreased or increased performance may simply be these random fluctuations, not due to an identifiable cause. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, could this situation be explained by random variation, or regression to the mean? Number 19. Outcome bias. We tend to evaluate decisions based on the result, instead of the process. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, was the process behind this good or bad, regardless of the result? Do I have enough evidence to evaluate the effectiveness of the process? What information did I have at the time? Number 20. Paradox of choice. An abundance of choice leads to inner paralysis, poorer decisions, and unhappiness with our decisions. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, how can I reduce the number of choices here? What are the key factors I want to evaluate? Number 21. Liking bias. The more we like someone, the more we want to buy from or help that person. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, do I like this person? Is that affecting my decision-making process? Number 22. Endowment effect. We consider things to be more valuable the moment we own them. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I valuing this too highly because it is already mine? What does the market think? Number 23. Coincidence. We tend to see unlikely events as causal, when in reality they are likely random. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, how unlikely is this event? Could it be caused by random chance? Number 24. Groupthink. In groups, we tend to avoid contradiction, and we tend to agree with the majority conclusion. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what is the devil's advocate view of this situation? Have we expressed our opinions independently? Number 25. Neglect of probability. We lack an intuitive grasp of probability, and instead tend to respond to the expected magnitude of an event, instead of its likelihood. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what is the rational response based on the probability and consequences of this event? What is the expected value or risk? Number 26. Scarcity error. When we are deprived of an option, we suddenly deem it more attractive. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, have I assessed this option based solely on costs and benefits? How would I evaluate it if it were available in abundance? Number 27. Base Rate Neglect We disregard the basic distribution levels for a given outcome. Often exacerbated by giving more detail, narrative fallacy contributes. Also made worse by survivorship bias. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what is the base rate in this situation? Is there an analogous situation I can rely on? Number 28. Gambler's Fallacy We tend to mix up events that are independent and dependent, for example, this ball has landed on black ten times, it must be red soon. What goes around comes around is just false. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what factors are independent and which are dependent in this situation? Number 29. Anchors 
when we guess something, we start from something we are sure of, and go from there. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what anchors might I be using here when I shouldn't be? Number 30. Induction. The inclination to draw universal certainties from individual, typically past, observations. The turkey problem, he lives a great life until Thanksgiving. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself. Dash. Number 31. Loss aversion. The fear of losing something motivates people more than the prospect of gaining something of equal value. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself. What are the objective upsides and downsides here? Am I overweighting the downside, or the fear of loss? Number 32. Social loafing. When people work together, and individual performance is not directly visible, their individual performance decreases. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, are we behaving differently here because we are a group? How are we evaluating individual performance? Number 33. Exponential growth. We do not have a good intuitive feel for exponential growth, versus linear growth. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, is there an exponential factor at play here? Or is it linear? Number 34. Winner's curse. The winner of an auction often turns out to be the loser. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I competing with someone here? Is that changing my behavior? What is my line in the sand if I'm bidding for something? Can I avoid an auction situation? Number 35. Fundamental Attribution Error The tendency to overestimate the influence of an individual, and underestimate external, situational factors. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what are the broader factors influencing the situation here? What degree of influence do they really have? Number 36. False Causality When we mix up correlation with causation. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, is there actually a link between these two factors? How do we know that one causes the other? How do we know they are linked at all? Number 37. Halo Effect When a single aspect dazzles us, and we fail to see the larger picture or evaluate other factors objectively, how to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what are the limits of this piece of information? Is it causing me to look at other things favorably or unfavorably? Number 38. Alternative Paths We fail to consider all the outcomes which could have happened, and therefore underestimate risk. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, if I try and evaluate from an outside view, what are all the possible outcomes for this situation? What are the associated risks with each path? Number 39. Forecast Illusion We tend to believe forecasts, despite the poor predictability and low downside for being wrong. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what incentives is this person subject to? Is there a downside if the prediction is wrong? How good is his success rate? Number 40. Conjunction fallacy. When a subset seems larger than the entire set. A result of our attraction to plausible stories. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, Am I dealing with a subset here? Am I trying to fit a plausible story to the situation? Number 41. Framing. We react differently to identical situations, depending on how they are presented. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what if I present this situation in the opposite way? How does that change my perception? Number 42. Action bias. We feel compelled to do something particularly in new or shaky circumstances, even if we have made things worse by acting too quickly or too often. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I just trying to act here? What if I just wait? Will I be able to better assess my options? Number 43. Omission bias. We tend to prefer an action whenever both action and inaction lead to cruel consequences. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, Am I avoiding a particular path because the consequences are bad, but less bad than in action? Number 44. Self-serving bias. We attribute success to ourselves and failure to external circumstances. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, what bluntly honest friends, or enemies, could I ask for an honest assessment of strengths and weaknesses? Number 45. Hedonic Treadmill. 
we adjust to new circumstances, and are unable to correctly predict our own emotions in response to new circumstances. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, will this lead to long-term or short-term happiness? Would this lead to something guaranteed to be negative? Number 46. Self-selection bias. We change the outcome of something by poorly selecting our sample. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, how does this sample affect the conclusions I'm trying to make? What would be the ideal sample? Number 47. Association bias. We make false connections between things that are not linked. Example. We condemn the bearers of bad news, due to the negative nature of the message. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I transferring qualities between things that are unrelated? Am I shooting the messenger? Number 48. Beginner's luck. We create a false link with early, past results. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, is the sample size enough to make a conclusion about luck versus skill here? Are there a large number of players here? Likely to cause random winners. Can I disprove my conclusion? Number 49. Cognitive dissonance. When inconsistencies in our thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes cause us to reinterpret events to keep things consistent. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I trying to reinterpret things to maintain a previous attitude or belief? Number 50. Hyperbolic discounting. The introduction of now, causing us to make inconsistent decisions. How to avoid this bias? Ask yourself, am I making an impulsive decision right now? Am I playing the long game or short game? Learn more about cognitive biases on mycognitivebiases.com or get the paperback or listen to the free audiobook with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.